This episode is brought to you by More Fire. Ignite your mind. We are kings and queens, and I've been telling you, you are a melanated being. You are one with the earth. You are one with the ground. The earth favors you. That's why when your hair grows, it grows towards the sun, just like the plants and the trees do. You're an amazing being. Even your swear, like just the way you walk, the way you play football or soccer, the way you play basketball, the way you sing, just the way you are, the way you work, just the way you walk. You know, like you go to the hood, you know, that's like poverty, but they dress poverty. You know, we take the nothing that we don't have and turn it into something. Podcast and chill. Matt G, the ghost lady, and Len Moleko. And uh, everybody, welcome to another episode of Podcast and Chill. I'm hanging out with the legendary DJ Spoo. And I was saying, it's always an honor to speak to you because when I started the podcast, you were one of the very first people to jump on and put it in the map. You know, the likes of you, DJ Zintle. And I always appreciate that, you know, because you didn't have to, you know what I mean? No, let me tell you the truth. The truth, we said you and I are going to have a meeting and we're going to have this podcast together. You never showed up. <laughs> but you know what? Like, like, I remember when Tia Gas brought a demo to TS Records. Sometimes when you look at things at a later stage, you're always proud that things did not happen the way you wish they could have happened. I'm glad that you ended up not doing this podcast with me. You did it on your own. Because I've been watching the, the, the success of it. And I knew, I knew it from when you started it. Because I knew at the time there was nobody doing a podcast. Mm. I knew that you were going to succeed. And I wanted to do it with you. Mm. And when I look at it now, I'm like, you're one of those where I'm like, big up. I'm so proud of you, bro. And I told you in that interview, I was like, big up for getting into uncharted territories. Because now you're a pioneer in South Africa with podcasts. Thank you, man. But listen, uh, the reason why I want to chat to you today uh, is because, you know, you're very well versed in business and entertainment. So I just, I just hope you could shed some yeah. light, you know, that might help some people in these trying times. So I want to yeah. split this interview into two parts. I want to talk to DJ Smooth, the artist, and then DJ Smooth, the businessman. So let's start with the artist. Okay. How has yeah. it impacted you, um, the coronavirus, as an artist? Um... I've said it, and, and let me say it again. Congratulations with all of your success and everything, success and everything you've done. I'm so proud of you, and I'm so proud of all of us when we start um, tapping into uncharted territories, and when we block out the outside noise and we do things that nobody else is doing, and we're brave enough to go pursue what we think will work out. It's working out for you. I can see your views. I can see your subscribers are growing all the time, and I can see the love and support you're getting from the nation. You might not be making as much money now. You're actually probably not making money at all now. But I like the fact that you've got a, a long game in your mind. You've got a vision. Because trust me, I'm guaranteeing you, before the end of this year, you're going to start making money with this podcast. And I'm definitely sure by this time next year, you'll be making more and more and more. It's just going to keep growing every year. Because finally, uh, the, um, the, the wake-up call has hit everybody. To answer your question, for me, I don't want to say, I, I don't want to be... Um, selfish and say, yeah, I told you guys, I told you guys. But I mean, I guess with a whole lot of other people, I'm one of the people that have been preaching the narrative of doing it our own, doing it on our own, following entrepreneurship, starting a side hustle, building multiple revenue streams of income, supporting our own, you know, keeping the money revolving around our own community, etc., etc. And that's a narrative I've been preaching all along. And finally, when this happens, it's not like I'm happy. But I uh, am happy in a way that people are getting, you know, when, you know, MacGyver, when you get tough love and it's not nice for you to learn what you're learning because it's sort of tough love. Yeah. I guess that's what the world is going through. I think we as humans have been very um, unfair to other species and creatures on earth. We've been killing, we've been killing animals, putting them in the zoos. We've been hunting animals as trophies. We've been polluting the atmosphere. We've been cutting down trees. 
We've been killing people. We've been starting wars. We've been um, not good to humanity, even to one another, so much so that I believe that today is or are the ending times, especially when some of the people that have read the Bible. I believe for anything to be good or for there to be light, there has to be the most darkest situation for it to be light or for peace, worldwide peace to prevail. Unfortunately, there has to be a lot of people that die. There has to be wars, etc. which I do believe that our great, great grandchildren, if we do the right things right now, they'll be living in a peaceful world. Cause I don't think we did our, our mankind uh, or our era and the era before and before and before and generations before, and, and, and I don't want to blame the white man, but we all know who's been yeah. running the world all these years and who runs the world currently. Yeah. And I think it's the white man. I, I don't think we've done justice to the world. So I cannot believe that even though things are bad as they are, God is just trying to take us to the next level where there will be peace eventually. It might not happen in our lifetime, it might not happen in our children's lifetime, but that's where it's going to. And when that starts, that's going to be the world that will be for hundreds of thousands of years before, unfortunately, um, what has happened happens again in millions of years because what is happening in life is what has happened before pretty much the Bible says it as well. So with my business of uh, the radio station, uh, Massive Metro, you know, I want to say, hey, myself and Gareth Cliff and Thibaut Touch, we foresaw this when everybody else was laughing at us and everybody was like, yeah, you guys are starting those stations. Nobody listens to, we don't have data. Data hey. is expensive, yeah. Mm. Do you know what I mean? But I'm happy that what we've been preaching is now starting to come to life where people are starting to wake up to be like, yo, if I don't up my game, if I don't up my hustle, if I don't rearrange my behavior, I don't change my behavior, or I don't rearrange my business, um, I'm going to be left behind because it's adapt or die. So for me, I'm affected like everybody else. But moving forward in the future, I think from the radio station side as one of my businesses, I think advertisers, what we've been preaching and what we've been telling them in all of our pitches, it's now time for them to start seeing, you know, these guys have actually been telling us the truth. It's now here. It's now happening. So I think we are on the right path with the, with the radio station side. And the fire side is the same because that's what I've been preaching. I've been like, guys, do it on your own. Guys, do your own thing. Guys, start What challenges hustle. have you faced with, with the, the coronavirus as, as fire? With the coronavirus as fire is... is and, and, and guys, sorry for the ones that feel that I'm speaking too much. MacGyver gave me permission. He said I can yeah, go yeah. on as much. Yeah, and I go crazy. Uh, everybody's got challenges. Everybody's experiencing um, challenges in their own right. And with the model that I had adapted because of our country and where we were, for me, it's always people first. I always say I'm a social entrepreneur. I'm not an entrepreneur. I'm not somebody who's out to be rich and wealthy, even the wealth that I always speak about that I'm a billionaire under construction. It's not like I'm just going to be some wealthy guy who's going to be driving around in, in private yards. For me, it's always been like to achieve that and show people that it's possible, can be done, and then take all of that money and give it back. Build universities, build hospitals, build any development centers for kids, invest in education, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what I want to do. I just want to live out my life following my name, being a blessing unto society. I think it's been brilliant what we've been able to do and it has kept our business alive and encouraging young guys to buy more fire and go sell it for themselves and make money. But it's not sustainable in the long run as much as it is sustainable. Let me say that why. Why? Because of what's going on right now. But even if the laws come or regulations change and nobody's allowed to be in groups or nobody's allowed to be outside, whether we like it or not, in the hood, there will always be people moving the streets. There'll always be people roaming the streets. There'll always be mamas selling vegetables in the corner. There'll always be flea markets in Makasi. There'll always be taxi rents in Makasi. And that's it's survival why I always, for them. Excuse me? It's survival for them. They have yeah, them. that's why I mean, there will always be a market for a business like ours in the hood. Yeah, for time. Now, don't be in town, but in the hood. In town, it's easier because solutions of using things like drop shipping. They are here. I was announcing a few months ago that Mofa is now on Take A Lot. You can order and Take A Lot. Your stock can be delivered at the door in a few days. And, and that's great. And Mofa is always going to be on other platform, Uber Eats and all these others that you are talking about. So we are affected immediately right now, yes. But long, long, long term, we're not really that much affected because 
there will always be people in the streets in the hood, will always be selling to people in the hood, and young people will always use more fire as a form of coming up to make themselves some profit, save some money, and get into other things that they want to do and grow with that. So I would say that we are affected, but I'm happy with what's going on in the world. You know, in China, they say the same word that is used for a crisis or for a pandemic or, or for chaos is the same word that means opportunity. So for me as an entrepreneur and somebody who's solutions driven, the way I think, I think um, this has been a long time coming. And, these and people, I, and when I say these people, MacGyver, I mean, we haven't been good to the world. Yeah. I think it's time that God is like, yo, I mean, try like that. And I want to jump in there when you talk about opportunities in business as a whole, what opportunities do you think will arise from this? Because I was telling a friend of mine the other day that, you know, we've been planning, like you were saying, that four years, three years, uh, everything is going to be digital. But the coronavirus has made it now, like, it's, it's, hap- it's no more three, four years. It's happening now. You have to adapt now. There's a lot of opportunities, MacGyver. Remember that opportunities as an entrepreneur come in, you solve your problems. And come in, you offering people services. And come in, you in um, monitoring society or your community or society at large or the world and seeing what the world needs so that you're able to offer those um, solutions, MacGyver. It's just like you. You started this podcast literally a year and a half ago. So at the time, as much as, yeah, one bunny here and there had podcasts. But MacGyver, you came up with your own idea. And you wanted this podcast to become number one in South Africa, which it is right now. But it's not like you did what um, is new and nobody had done. You pretty much followed a route that everybody had been using all along, but you did it your own way. And you knew that you had an audience. You've worked for YFM, you've worked for Highfold, et cetera. You've got radio experience. It's not like you left Highfold or you were fired or whatever because you don't have skills or you don't have the audience. Whatever happened, happened. You were young. We all made our mistakes when we were young. But as we grow, you knew when I'm a guy, but that, you know what? There's an opportunity for a podcast in South Africa. The world is changing. Data will, will fall very soon. People are getting online. Content that is created online daily keeps increasing in numbers. Let me get into this and start my own MacG podcast. Look at how big your podcast is now. And it's nothing compared to what, it's going to, what it will be in 2025, what it will be in 2030. You're going to have millions of subscribers. You're going to have a huge podcast. You're going to be making hundreds of thousands every month, if not millions every year with what you're doing. But what did you do? MacGyver, you looked at an opportunity, you looked at a market, and you looked at all of us that are talented to do this podcast. But nobody did. And you were the first. I don't want to say the first. Yes, there's others who were the first, maybe. But I think mainstream, in outside of the mainstream media, you're the first one that showed people that you can do a podcast mobile and invest in equipment where you can interview people and, and, and do well. And that's exactly how I think a lot of people should approach this. To say, with this change of behavior, how are people's lives going to be moving forward? What are things I can do online to better myself or to make money for myself or to create a business for myself? I did make an example earlier about dropshipping. Dropshipping is basically like delivering, like what Uber Eats is doing or what Uber is doing or what um, Mr. Delivery, Mr. D and Take A Lot are doing. That's dropshipping, basically. You don't even have to own the vehicles or the motorbikes or the vans. You can even go up by much than a vehicles. Among our seventies, you can go. You can even start with just three guys, or you can even start with five guys, or ten guys, or twenty guys, and say we are only focusing in Dobsonville, or we are only focusing in Sichel, or we are only focusing in Wamashu, or we are only focusing in Kukuleit. Then you can grow to another place and another place, and as you make mistakes, you keep perfecting it and fixing it. So those are the type of opportunities that are there. Affiliate marketing. Um, if you go to Amazon's um, website. There's opportunities there for young hustlers who are digitally online to sell Amazon's products to other people who are online. Remember, guys, there's billions of people who are on YouTube daily and who are on the internet daily. There's so much where you can purchase a product for this price or acquire this, put in your own little markup like what we do with Mofa in the streets, but do that online and then sell it to other people. That's called affiliate marketing, where you are creating and getting leads for companies or for small businesses. Or that's also what you can do for Amazon. There's so many opportunities online and not only online with people's behavioral patterns changing. Remember, you don't have a business if you don't have the people. The fact that there's still 55 to about 60 million people in South Africa that forever be business. It's about how do you think and what ideas do you have to get those people, get that money out of their pockets and give it to you. 
and, 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 and can you apply everything that you're saying with music? And the reason why I'm asking that is because, let's say, for example, I am Labantuan about Uber. Release a song in December. It's a smash hit. You know when you've got a hit. You've had hit many hits before. You get a lot of money, you know. Um, I buy cars, buy houses now, and then boom, Corona comes. What do you do now is don't be afraid of what people are going to say. I'll make you an example. When I started Mofire, I was at the peak of my entertainment career. But I, I foresaw about, about Kespanyovas coming. I foresaw about Ricky Rick coming. And not that I was intimidated by new talent. You know I help new talent and I like young people coming in. But I knew that I'm getting older. And in entertainment, as much as you can have a long career, you never know. It's dicey. You, you, you're reliant on your audience. And your audience right now, for instance, our audiences, entertainment is the last thing on their mind. Yeah. Yes, except for young people. Young people, you know, consume entertainment the most. But entertainment is the last thing on them. The first thing on their mind is, politi is politics of the stomach. It's food for themselves, food for their children, food for their family, and the means to make money moving forward. So what I want to say when I'm a guyver is, I believe a lot of brilliant minds are going to come out of this because the young guys that we have now are different from you and I. As much as I'm older than you, but the younger guys now are different. The younger guys are they're growing up with technology on their side. And they're so savvy and so astute in that. I mean, I just joined TikTok, what, two weeks ago? <laughs> and when I joined it, I'm seeing ordinary youngsters with 100,000 followers, with 30,000 followers. Yeah, yeah. And they're doing the most entertaining things. And I'm like, wow. <laughs> That's how we came into the game. When we came mm. into the game, they thought we were crazy. We had an artist called Umzeze, mm. who was doing exactly what these young people are doing on TikTok, on, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram. But they've got technology on their side. When we came up, we didn't have it on their side. And when I look at what they're doing, I just see so many young people that are going to succeed. A lot of them are not even aware how big they're going to become and how successful they're going to become. But I just want them to be entrepreneurially wired mentally so that everything they do, they don't become like Smu or Bonang or Peltusi or Boiti, but they become better than Vusiti and Bavayu, better than Trevor Noah, better than Black Coffee, better than, better than Smuda, better than Bonang, better than Stogie T, better than whoever is doing it out there because they've had enough time to watch us do it and they've got technology on their side. So it's all about being creative and that that you think makes you happy, do more of it. And that that people say you're crazy when you're doing, that's pretty much what I think you should be doing because you can't be like everybody else, you know? Mm. Dude, you've been uh, singing this praise for the longest time, you know, about black excellence. Are you seeing a shift in people's mentality? You know, when you are on these platforms, like my platform or your Facebook Live, your Instagram Live, because you're always preaching the same message. Are you seeing a difference? I mean, it's intentional that I preach the same message because they say, because I know my community, my community is black people. Repetition is the way. That's why you're brainwashed because they know not how to change your community. Now, look at the TV, my ass will move any generation. That's why these big companies they spend the most Bafagama advert to each generation because that's the brainwash time that they have for you. Yeah. Brainwash, brainwash, brainwash. And then you end up calling every um, fluoride toothpaste Colgate. You end up calling every drink Coca Cola. And, do you know what I mean? Mm. Because you've been brainwashed so much because you just keep doing things that they want them to do, the system wants you to do. I'm saying right now, there's going to be so many successful people because we are forced, we've got our backs against the wall. And once you've got people's backs against the wall and there's no solution, and you know black people, bro, black people always survive in any situation. You can leave a black person in the desert, somehow they'll survive. They'll <laughs> even get to the old before you get there. You get to the old how? You know? That's how black people are. Because the very same black people that you hire, to do a new system that you're trying to block out everybody else. Those are the same black people who stay in the hood who are going to tell everybody else. So no matter how things can be so difficult right now, I really do think that black people are the most intelligent. Black people started mathematics. Black and Nigerians started the internet. 
Black people started, black person started um, Johnny Walker, black, well, Johnny Walker, the alcohol, bro. Even black the, people started the light thing. The, the electricity, it was a black guy, man, I forgot his name. But yeah, mm-hmm. it's mostly black people, but it's just that credits were taken from us. And our history made us believe that we're inferior and we're not good enough. But I'm standing here to tell you that the fact that you can stand in the sun the whole day and not eat sunscreen, mm-hmm. The fact that you can grow your hair and your hair grows towards the sun, sunshine D, vitamin D. The fact that you can walk the way you walk. The fact that you can take poverty and turn it around and make it look sexy. That's why when you look around right now, everybody wants to be black, but nobody wants to (laughs) endure the things that black people endure. And, And there's a saying that says, everybody wants the rhythm, but don't want the blues that come with it, you know? So I kind of feel that's the gift that we have as black people. But at the same time, with what is going on mentally, we should start um, having a different mindset to say, this is not just some sort of a holiday that we've been given. This is not some sort of a punishment from the government. And also start reading current affairs from overseas because what's happening in America affects the whole world. What's happening in China right now affects the whole world. Because right now you've got the Communist Party leading China. You've got China doing pharmaceutical deals with big pharmaceutical companies in America. You've got America being a powerhouse as the first world nation that influences the rest of the world. So if you don't follow what's going on in Europe right now, if you don't follow what's going on in America right now, you won't know what's going to happen here in South Africa soon. Because those decisions that Abu Trump, Abu Bill Gates, Abu Fauci, or Abu Communist Party in China are taking, all those decisions, at, at the long run, they're going to affect us. So I'm trying to say, open up your mind and follow current affairs overseas. Follow what's going on overseas. Follow what's going on with this situation right now overseas because it's going to, um, it, it's pretty much going to affect how we're going to live forward. But with that being said, and what, what I said earlier on to say, we must think positively and be solutions driven. I really do think that the internet is going to come up with, is going to come with, a whole lot more opportunities for young people than, it, than, than, than the opportunities that were there for us. But the fact is, for people like us here in Africa, we need resources, infrastructure, and we need these cell phone companies to stop taking advantage of us. You know, when you look in, 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 Tanz- in, in Kenya, East Africa, one gig of data is about, what, like 20, what, 15 rand, 10 rand equivalent? Mm. One gig of data in Tanzania is an equivalent of five rand. One gig of data in South Africa is more than 100 rand. Yeah. Vodacom, they've just dropped it by 30% now. It's like maybe 60 or 70 rand. And the cheapest being what, Telcom Mobile or being Rain. Yeah. Rain, you get one gig for 50 rand. As much as it's cheap, but it's still expensive. Now imagine when data eventually drops and how many people get on the internet and how much knowledge they're going to acquire by being on the internet and how many ideas that are going to be out there for young people to make money. I think there's going to be a whole lot more opportunities. I don't think it's the end, but I just think it's the beginning. What did you think of the president's speech? I thought ordinary people might not understand the numbers that are being announced there, but I think it's great that the president does care about the people. He spoke about the stimulus packages and for different people, for small business owners, for um, grant recipients, etc. But if you're somebody like me, you are what is called middle class. You live in these suburbs, in these beautiful homes. We shouldn't forget where we come from. We shouldn't forget about the people where we come from. And we shouldn't even be uh, greedy so much so that we also want to get something from the government. I think these are the times where people like us should be standing up to want to help our brothers and sisters back in the township. And that's why I don't like words like black tax. As if like it's some burden of some sort. I don't think it is. I think... It's just our lifestyle as black people based on our history and based on how the entire village wanted you to succeed and be educated as a child. Now that you are educated, it's your duty and your responsibility to go out there and help out your little cousins, your little nieces, younger nephews and, and, and neighbors, etc. And for me, that's how I think because I'm always a positive thinker. I'm always solutions driven. So I do think that the uh, president is, is guiding the country in the right way. He is not letting the country panic. Everybody's going to have different opinions all the time. But what do you do, though, when you're fighting an invisible enemy? What do you do, though, when the economy is under pressure? And there's different conspiracy theories that are out there, you know? I mean, when you look at it, literally, 
the current economy, world economy as we know it, is getting shut down. Yeah. The cryptocurrency blockchain guys have been screaming this also for many years because you need to remember there's only a certain number of bitcoins that are going to be created, yeah. meaning all of them are numbered, meaning it cannot be manipulated as the money system is being manipulated currently. Like if you look at a country like America, America owes China trillions of dollars. And the big pharma in America, most of those pharmaceutical products that they get, more than 70 to even 80 to 90% of them come from China. China is a manufacturing economy. They pretty much supply everything, the whole world. Look, even my glasses are falling. That's China for you. <laughs> They're from China. China supplies everyone, bro. And so when this happens, is there going to be a world governing body that holds China accountable? Or are we just going to sit back and just watch China use us as they are. I mean, you look at what they're doing to Africans out there in China. And do you really believe that China's got good intentions coming into Africa? You do know China has been making so many different meetings with different African leaders. And for me, it's like, ah, oh, we're going through colonization again, but now it's through the Chinese. It's no longer the Western world. But then what do we do? Because we don't have the money and China's got all the money. And when that money comes, it comes with its own conditions. So. Do I believe the virus is created? A lot of conspiracy theories say yes. Some other conspiracy theories say it's, it's a virus that comes from a bat. But it doesn't matter the, the origins of the virus. I say currently what we have is this situation and this virus, which is deadly for a lot of people. And I think the information that should be going out there is how do people uh, boost up their immune system? And I'm not hearing a lot of that out there on the line as much as Dr. Sebi was... Um, Dr. Sebi died preaching the same message that we can heal ourselves through the food that we eat. But now we're in GMOs, we're ingesting all the genetically modified foods. We're just eating all these different things that are man-made. We are no longer those people that were, our ancestors were, where we were relying on umhlaba, the earth, land. Because land gives us everything. All these particulars to make cell phones, all these different minerals that the world has become wealthy of, that they get from the African continent, our clothes, the books that we make, the computers, the laptops, the phones, the food that we eat, uh, and, and herbs that are meant to heal our bodies. Everything comes from the earth. That's why the land is so important. The land conversation is the most important one. But what has happened in the world, as we started earlier on, when we first started this interview, I did say that um, mankind has been messing up the world. We've been polluting the earth. We've, we've been ill-treating um, God's people. We've been cutting down the trees. We've been putting on chemtrails all over. We've been selling chemicals. We haven't been encouraging people to eat organic foods that they can plant at the back of their homes. And people are so brainwashed into believing they must always buy food from retail outlets, etc. But Dr. Sebi came and he taught us. And it's not only Dr. Sebi, it's Ningi Nyanga, Ezalaikaya, that even till today have been preaching that message. And every time when they do preach that message in public, they're always wrong or they're ostracized as they're preaching wrong things. But that's how our ancestors were living. Our parents, the reason our parents can live up until the 60s, their 70s, their 80s, some of our great grandparents are in their hundreds. They live up until 100 years old, 105 years old. Why? Because they grew up under um, eating organic foods and all these years. And us, we are living in a different world where I kind of feel we need to be, especially us as Africans, we need to be learning what our ancestors used to do. And we need to also look at history, how our history was turned against us, that we, we hate ourselves and all these different things. And I think this has been a great opportunity for a lot of people to learn about what's going on in the world so that we, we, we can move forward better. But uh, I really do think that um, whether it's created or it's not created, the disease or the virus is out there, but it's about what do we do with it? Because I believe for it to be light, it has to be extremely, extremely, extremely dark. And unfortunately, a lot of people have to lose uh, uh, their lives for, for, for the world to experience peace eventually in, in hundreds of years to come. Dude, when I, when I listen to you, I, I get a sense, and you know, I'm, I'm, I'm privileged to have known you for, for quite some time now, but the more and more I talk to you, I feel like you are, it's like a calling what you're doing now, you know? Because from, I mean, I could be wrong, but I don't even see the need for you to like, okay, fine, you can have more fire to make money, but I don't see you having the need to, to, to be a motivational speaker, to preach the message that you are. When did you realize that, shit, this is my purpose and this is what I want to do? You know, MacGyver, I always say it's important the, the name that you give to your child because I always believe that uh, you follow the name. 
You know, like you need to remember MacGyver, you don't give yourself the name. It's because every time when you're a kid or you're an infant, every time when your parents are, are next to you and they're about to get your attention or they're doing something to you, there's this thing that they say. There's this thing that they say. They keep saying Smusiso. They keep saying Smusiso. They keep saying Smusiso so often that when you hear Smusiso, you pay attention. And that's how you get your name as a child. And you grow up like that. I mean, my name was Musiso, which means a blessing. And today I always say I'm blessed to become a blessing unto others. So the name that you give your child is important. And I always say that my entire career is dedicated to my mother. You can read all my books, like all my three books, I'll tell you. My career is dedicated to my mom's, you know, and my career being dedicated to my mom's because my mom's told me from when I was a child, I just never understood at the time I was young. My mom even... I never used to understand that, and I, I just used to rebel against my mother as an ordinary child, but as time goes on, only now I understand the meaning of a name. And how I understand it is because of how the mind works and how the subconscious mind works. Everything you've ever learned is in your subconscious mind. The subconscious mind never knows what the date is. The subconscious mind recognizes what it recognizes. It's like a fertile land. But that subconscious mind like a fertile land. And I talk about this information on, on, my, on the, the last book that I wrote um, last year. And I think, you know, yeah, it was last year, my last book. I'm currently writing my fourth book, which will be out by the end of this year. Mm -hmm. I talk about how, how, um, how the mind absorbs everything you give it. And if you give it negativity, it absorbs all of that as well. And then the subconscious mind is the one that uh, informs the conscious mind and is what informs your speech. And your speech is what informs the universe or the world. And what you inform, what you speak about with your own mouth, which is informed by your mind, is what eventually you act upon and is what you, is what you become, right? And that's what the law of, of attraction teaches us. That's what we learn from the secret. So we learn from Think and Grow Rich. So we learn from the outliers and all these different books and all these different people that have, that have succeeded when they share their information. But with that being said, you need to remember that everything is here, which means we must go and change here. You are saying to me, Smuda, have you always been like this? I think it's because of my name. Hearing my name, Jalo, 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 even though I, I was not aware why my mom was calling me that and when she used to explain it and everything. But as time goes and as, as you become older, and then God, tonight you look at harm, but then you start seeing, wow, this is what I used to dream about. This is what I used to say. It happened, it's happening exactly the same way. Wow, this is what I, do you know what I mean? And then you start understanding, when you start reading books, you start getting more informed, you start maturing, you're like, wow, oh, that's how the world works. And I think it's because of my moms and I always give credit to my moms and I'm happy that my mom, uh, may my dad's soul rest in peace wherever he is, but I'm glad that he passed on after he had seen me as a grown man and he had seen his grandchild and he had seen that even if he passes on, I've got this, you know, I'm the man that can look after my moms. My mom's is still alive, but I always attribute my success to my mother to say that my mom, what she used to preach us, she used to say to my ears all the time is what I've become. So I want to say the same thing, MacGyver, that um, I've become like this because of my mom. Mm -hmm. And I want to encourage people that have got kids. I know there's a lot of young parents that are watching us right now, whether your child is three years old, whether your child is 10 years old, it's important the name that you give your children and it's important what you teach your children because you need to remember you and I were brainwashed. You and I were lied to. You and I don't have to let our children go through the same thing. You and I have got an opportunity now to start homeschooling our kids, teaching them their vernacular language, teaching them their South African history, teaching them their African history, letting them know who they are, letting them know that it was a lie that that white Jesus that is on every black home's house was a lie. <laughs> they must go read Revelations and really find out the truth. Who are the people that we are reading about in the Bible? So all of that truth that you wish you could have known earlier, it's your responsibility right now to go teach your kids all of that information. And I think with that way, we can only build a better generation like that. We were told we must finish our degrees, we're gonna get jobs, we're gonna get drive nice cars, but we are lied to. So the information we must teach our kids now is go be self-sustainable, go plant gardens, 
go veg vegetarian if you can, go vegan if you can, go plant the garden. You don't even have to be rich. You can just go plant ama patata, ama zamba, anum rojo at the back of the house. Just go organic. Go, you know, the things that you wish you could have been taught when you were young. It's a great opportunity right now to go teach your kids. Wow, man, that's amazing. Uh, last time we spoke, you were on your way to be a billy, a billionaire. <laughs> how far or how close are we to that billion, man? I've been that when I'm a guy, um, I've been that because I, I think I've got so much to offer the world. And I think a lot of people never understood me. They thought I was talking about monetary value, that I'm a billionaire. I was just basically saying, even when you talk about billions, I'm worth more than that. You know, when you look at somebody like um, the late, great Dr. Miles Monroe, Madiba, you look at such people. Madiba was worth even more than a billion. You know, it's, he was not a businessman, but he was somebody who was put on earth to live out his purpose. You know, and I think, and, and I'm those type of people. My purpose is in my name. You know, I'm blessed to become a blessing unto other people. And I think what I'm worth to my community is even worth more than billions. I'm worth trillions. I'm worth gazillions to my community because I believe that I'm somebody who just doesn't preach things or mlom or gamlom mm. to youngsters. But I think I'm somebody who shows people how you can better your life and how you can become a better person by living my own life. Mm. And, I, and the reason why over the past five, six years, I've been recording so much with my phone and sharing all that information, selling in the streets and all of that. I knew that a lot of my work, when it happened, when I had TS Records with TK and we built that legacy, unfortunately, there was no internet, there were no cameras. So all of my legacy is only in people's minds. And those people are going to die in the next yeah. 50 years, in the next 70 years. Shit, really They're going to die with, with my legacy of what I did in this country. So that's why I kind of felt God has given me another chance mm. to show people how great I am mm. by starting this more fire business, by starting this massive metro business, by writing these awesome books, by being the best me, the best move I can be. I must make sure that I record everything so that it's out there for future generations to watch and learn and use that as an example of what to do and what not to do so they can become better people. And when my daughter is old enough, she can look back and be proud of the work that her, her father is put on. So I always say to people, legacy is important. Playing the long game is the way. Having a short-term goal, a mid-term goal, a long-term goal is the way. Writing down your goals is the way. Saying your affirmations on a daily basis is the way. Not giving a damn about what people are going to say about you is the way. Having, guys, you know, I mean, look at this book. This is what I'm reading right now. And I bought this book two years ago. I never read it. I think I read about, I read the first two chapters called Crushing It. It's by, it's by Gary Vaynerchuk, right? You yeah, guys do know Gary Yeah, I follow him on, on, on Instagram. Fucking legend. He's dope. I don't like people that swear. Um, I mean, I know that you also swear sometimes. But he's got so much to say, so much so that he's worth listening to, even if you don't like people that swear. Just like Meg G's podcast is number one in South Africa, even if sometimes he swears. I think what he has to say is more worthy more than his swear words. You know, and I think... This is a book you can go read. These are the type of entrepreneurs you can go follow, which I do the same. I follow the Dan Locks, the Gary Vaynerchuk. I follow the Robert Kiyosaki, the Brian Roses of this world. I follow all sorts of different people from all over the world, even from Africa, South Africa, overseas, Europe, etc. because I always want to be a better person. But uh, I really do believe in the future. I really do believe in um, uh, the young people of South Africa. And I also do believe that a lot of South Africans are not, don't know how great and awesome they are. Uh, if you go out there, you well, go to New York, you go to Australia, you go to London, you go to Canada, you go to LA or Atlanta. Everybody, when you start saying South Africa, people start getting interested, want to hear more. Wow. All the film directors, musicians, any industry you can talk of, when you start saying it from South Africa, people want, they want to know more. You know what I mean? And, I think some people think it's only the few people that have made it internationally that come here from home. It can be us. Trust me, it can be you. Because wow. the world wants more of where Trevor comes from, where Black Coffee comes from, where Tusombetu, Terupito, um, Nomzamo, you can name them, Shalice Theron. Where they come from, the world is looking for more of that type of talent where those type of people come from. And only you guys are going to be the ones that show the world how great we are as South Africa because we are kings and queens. And I've been telling you, 
You are a melanated being. You are one with the earth. You are one with the ground. The earth favors you. That's why when your hair grows, it grows towards the sun, just like the plants and the trees do. You're an amazing being. Even your swear, just the way you walk, the way you play football or soccer, the way you play basketball, the way you sing, just the way you act, the way you work, just the way you walk. You know, like you go to the hood, you know, that's like poverty, but they dress poverty. You know, we take the nothing that we don't have and turn it into something. And, and sometimes I think we become too harsh on, on, on our brothers and sisters and Africans and black people. Say, yeah, you guys like spending, etc. And that's a mindset we need to get rid of. But it's because we never had so much for many years. That, that little win that you get, you want to celebrate it. You want other people to see that you've got some sort of a win, you know, because we grew up in so much poverty. But right now is the time to start being spenders, to start being producers. And, and I know this has been preached all along, but I think what is going on right now is waking people up and it's time to build those gardens. It's time to eat right. It's time to move to an alkaline based type of a diet when you're eating. It's time to start training. It's time to better ourselves. It's time for you to focus on what you love, whether it's swimming, it's running, it's reading, it's helping kids, it's volunteering at an orphanage. It's whatever it is that makes you happy, do more of it. Because when you do more of what makes you happy, your um, energy vibrates on a half frequency. When your energy vibrates on a half frequency, you attract things of that frequency. As much as there's always gonna be challenges, but you are, vibra you are vibrating on a half frequency and you just become that type of person that sometimes just attract opportunities instead of chasing them because you've made yourself that person. Success is not out there. What you're looking for is not out there. The love that you're looking for is not, it's not somebody else that's going to make you happy. You have to make yourself happy even before you meet a partner. Your partner is only just to come to compliment you. You make each other happy. But now when you are relying on somebody else to make you happy, well, I can't live without you. So nobody said, hey, King, I'm look at you. I'm not going to go to Friday, Friday, the 15th. Like you must be able to make yourself happy. You must be able to not seek a boyfriend, seek a boyfriend. If they come into your life, that's good enough. That's a blessing. Thank you. But you must be able to rise your own energies and make yourself so amazing that you vibrate every time on a higher frequency. And trust me, the universe is going to respond. It can be God, it can be whatever you believe in. But once your frequency is on a high vibration, that's all you attract. You attract people who only vibrate at that high frequency. You attract who you are. You attract what you are, MacGyver. DJ Spoo, is this you? <laughs> that's dope, man. Hey, it's all of this, right? The books. <laughs> This episode is brought to you by More Fire. Ignite your mind.